Um, so we're going to look at proactive prospecting today. Um, and to begin with, then, obviously, we want to talk about, you know, the fact that if you want to bring new clients into your business, what we really need to think about is that it does take that managed um, and consistent effort. Yeah. It isn't very often that clients, new clients, just, you know, filter into our inbox or just pop up unless we've got some tools that do that for us. You know, there are scenarios where we can set up functions that help us generate leads. Um, but certainly for the most of us, you know, we do have to actually go out there and physically generate the, that awareness and that interest ourselves. So, and that does take some management um, and it does take that constant effort. Um, and we need to make sure that prospecting is about following a real clear plan of action. Um, and that also requires that constant review and refinement. You know, we, we don't just suddenly have this really great prospecting um, or lead generation process that we then never have to touch again. It's about constantly looking at that and evaluating it. What works? What doesn't work? What do I need to tweak? Um, so we're just going to talk through now some real hints and tips around how you can make prospecting more powerful. Um, and I think it goes without saying now more than ever, we do need to think about getting that prospecting journey right. Um, as more and more business opens up, there are going to be lots of people going after the same customers. Yeah. So what we need to do is make sure that we are prospecting in the right way. Um, and what that will actually enable us to do is stand head and shoulders above our competitors um, and also show us as experts in our field. Um, and that can be really powerful. So what is prospecting all about? What is it? What is that journey about? Obviously, in literal terms, it means that creating prospective clients, doesn't it? What we mean when we say prospecting is about finding those proactive um, prospective clients um, and it's everything that we do to do the following first of all raise awareness raise awareness of our brand um, so what are some of the things that we could be doing to raise the awareness of our brand then we could certainly be doing things like content marketing yeah things like blogs and um, things like sharing stats um, about industry knowledge um, we want to be doing things here that raises the awareness of our brand. Yeah, we could be, um, you know, offering tips. We could be talking about trends. We could be sharing our thoughts and feelings. Going to things like networking is often an awareness journey. Um, we could be going to trade shows. We could still be using the phone at the awareness point. But you'll see my point at the end around what, what we don't want to do at this awareness point. Um, but we could still be using the phone, certainly to say things like, you know, I'm going along to a networking event. Um, I wondered if you'd like to join me or we've got an up and coming webinar. Um, I noticed that you guys use X. We've got an up and coming webinar where we're going to be sharing some tips and tricks around that. You know, would you be interested in coming along? we also want to be looking at raising that interest. So remember, at this early stage in the journey, anybody who's worked with us here at Elation before will remember that triangle that we use. And at the top, we have awareness. So it's about getting awareness of your brand. And then we're moving through into that interest where people start to see that the product or service you have is relevant to them yeah so again at that awareness stage i'm sorry at the interest stage we could be looking at things like webinars so sharing information about what we do we could be looking at things like podcasts um you know one of the things i've seen a lot of people do really well and there's people like rin who's not with us today because she's on holiday and um, you know free reviews of our services i know chris has also done that before as well you know thinking about that free review it's a really good tool here to use at that interest stage. Things like quizzes, online diagnostics, um, calls just to get to know each other. So that chemistry meeting. The one thing we need to be really sure of at this prospect stage is we are not selling. Yep, there is absolutely no selling going on at this phase. Um, we can share information, we can add value, we can... Um, you know, show ourselves as experts in our field. We can raise people's awareness of what we do, 
but we are not selling to them. Hands up anybody who's ever had a phone call from somebody um, who they've never spoke to before in their life um, and automatically off the bat or a LinkedIn message or an email and automatically off the bat they just start selling at you. Yeah, most of us had one of those and I don't know about you but I am highly unlikely to buy from somebody that I know nothing about and I've just met um, and I use the analogy here, so moving on as to when prospecting doesn't work. So why are there times when prospecting doesn't work? For me, I look at it very much as a journey. Yep. So what we need to remember is that prospecting piece is the beginning part of your journey. Um, and I use the analogy here around, you know, if you met somebody today and you started chatting with them, what's the chances that you would decide within five minutes that they were your best friend, yeah? And would you start deciding to share your biggest secrets and your fears and your hopes in life with somebody you've just met? Most of us will probably answer no. Um, and that's because in, in our personal lives, we recognise that that relationship takes time. Sometimes in the business world, we don't always give that the same thought. Yeah, we think, oh, it's OK, I can, you know, build this relationship really quickly and I can move on to talking about all of their problems and I can talk to them about how I can solve them. At this awareness and interest phase, that's not what we want to be doing. Um, we want to be thinking about this as a two way interaction. So there's a couple of reasons why prospecting doesn't work. That first one is because we think of it as a one dimensional piece of work. We think of it very much as a transactional um, piece of work and we don't think of it as an ongoing journey. And um, anybody who generates leads by just doing one thing is not likely to yield the amount of results that they want. Um, and also, therefore, we shouldn't be judging our outcomes on that one piece of work. So if I say, oh, you know, I did 15 um, cold calls yesterday and it generated me no results. Um, I shouldn't be measuring myself based on that. If I also said, you know, I sent 90 LinkedIn messages over the last couple of days and again, I've got very low results. We don't want to be measuring our output on that one activity. We want to be thinking about it as an ongoing journey where we have lots of different opportunities and touch points to build a relationship with that person. You know, at this stage, we are thinking about opening the door, about building that relationship and helping them to understand that we are an expert in our field um, and that we can really add value to what it is they are doing. So that's number one, people often fall down because they think of it as more of a transaction than as a journey. And um, we also need to make sure here that we are um, actively following up, yeah? So if we just expect to do some prospecting and that that's going to turn into paid clients, again, our chances are highly diminished. We need to be thinking about what are the follow-up activities that I want to create off the back of this to make sure that I am moving people along that journey. You know, we want to take them from that awareness to interest and into evaluation. Now, once we get them to that evaluation point, that is when we can start, as Stacey very rightly put, solving their problems, not selling. We don't ever need to really think about this journey as selling. We need to think about that as solving their problems, providing them with solutions. But we definitely need to get them to that point of evaluation where they really understand that they definitely need our services they're just deciding whether we're the right people to deliver them before we start selling or talking about how we can solve their problems. So that's a little bit there about why it doesn't work or when it doesn't work, but let's think about now the smart way of prospecting. How can we ensure that we are being really smart in the way that we prospect our leads um, and bring in new business? So, as I said, you know, building an engaged audience does take time, you know, and it takes consistency um, and it involves being really sincere and really authentic with your audience. 
um, and you know, helping them to really understand what it is about you that, that is going to help them. And we should be looking to do some prospecting pretty much every day. I you know some people say their time is a, you know, a challenge. Um, we don't have to be thinking about this in terms of, oh, I need to be doing three, four hours a day, even 10 minutes a day, thinking about those small ways in which you can start adding more people into your pipeline to move them along that journey is really going to help you. So let's have a little look at the four areas that we really need to think about. The first one, and we talked about this a little bit already, but is be diverse. Yeah, that one size fits all approach really doesn't work. Um, so if we're thinking we can generate leads just from LinkedIn messages, we are cutting off a whole heap of potential clients. Yeah, what we need to think about in any part of our journey is that we are creating opportunities for those people to connect with us in a way that meets their needs, not in a way that meets our needs, in a way that meets their needs. So be diverse. I mean, if I think about Elation, for an example, here we've done lots of things over the years from writing personalized letters, you know, we looked at a, a very key target market that we were interested in working with off the back of us being successful in that field before. Um, and Karen wrote some really nice personal letters, sharing information about what we do, not selling, sharing information about what we do. We added in there things like you know, little bits of case studies or testimonials. Um, we added in their tips and hints around you know, what we knew about their business and how we felt that perhaps they could move their business forward. We were information sharing. We weren't selling at that point. So be diverse. Think about webinars. Think about podcasts. Um, think about you know, invites to events. Be consistent. Yeah. So if you're going to use LinkedIn, decide what's achievable for you you know be consistent with that you're better off sharing two posts a week than one week 10 posts and then nothing for three weeks yeah and um, if i'm going to get an email from you if you're doing an email marketing campaign and i see three or four weeks of really great content and hints and tricks and then you disappear i forget that you even exist so at this stage, at that prospecting stage, be consistent. Think about how I can consistently be in touch with these people um, and add value. Third point, keep pushing this point home to everybody, um, but certainly we are not selling at this point, yeah? Don't sell. Unless you can hand on heart and you have concrete evidence to say that that person has moved in to a really evaluating your services. And this is often at the point where, you know, they're perhaps asking for something like a quote or they've got a real in-depth question about how you could add value to their service. But we've definitely moved them into that lead nurture phase where there's that you know, real possibility of working with them. Don't focus on selling. Focus on building that relationship. Um, and taking them step by step to the point where they can effectively evaluate you. And finally, always look at how you are adding value. So everything you do from your content marketing, from your LinkedIn posts, from your email campaigns, from the conversations that you might be having with them, um, to an invite that you might be sending them to a webinar or an event that you're going to, that you would like them to attend with you. Think about how that adds value to that customer. If it's not adding value, it, it's not worth you spending that time, you know, trying to push that client down that route. Um, think about the ways that you can actually add value to them as opposed to just another reason to pick up the phone or another reason to send you an email. Always be thinking about your value proposition and how you can actually use that to show yourselves as an expert in your field. Um, and you know, leverage your ability so that they can see why they would want to work with you. So moving on to your action plan then um, for this week, what I would really like you guys to do is consider any key changes you need to make for more 
powerful prospecting journey. So, you know, you're probably going to need to take a look at the sales process that you already have um, and work out what, what are the changes I can make here to make my sales process stronger, to add more structure, to make sure the activities I do fall into that camp of raising awareness, raising interest um, and not selling. Then you'll need to create that implementation plan. So what are all the things then I therefore need to do? If I recognise these are the changes I need to make, how am I going to make that happen? I need to start planning out all of those things that I might need to do. Do I need to create more marketing material? Do I need to change some of my marketing material? Do I need to think about new ideas to help me move outside of that box? And then, of course, if you have team members working on this with you, you then need to brief them about your new journey and make sure that they are also moving in the same direction.